Okay, so let's finish up the series of differential amplifier today. Uh, this will be a quick lecture. So as you can see, we have no intro and we probably have no outro or the cat five seconds. So let's just get right into it. So first of all, uh, why do we need to know uh, the input impedance? Uh, so in a short way, we can the input impedance or input resistance, you can use your words, uh, it determines the loading effect on the signal source. So uh, the difference amplifier or diff amplifier has two types of input resistance or input impedance. The first type is the differential mode input resistance. So this is the, res the resistance that is seen by the signal source uh, in when the your differential amplifier is in the difference the differential mode the second type is the common input resist common mode input resistant uh, the resistant basically this is the resistance seen by the signal source when your amplifier is in common mode okay so I give a couple circuit example in here. Don't take it for what it is. We will go in detail a little bit later. So when your circuit is in uh, differential mode, so basically you just have to um, technically calculate the current coming in over the voltage. So usually it's the input current I, IB. Uh, I mean, sorry, the voltage over the current. So use the input voltage VD over the input current uh, IB likewise you do the same thing um, if you calculate uh, uh, you can calculate the uh, common mode input impedance easily by divide VCM for the current coming in so for the uh, differential mode uh, input resistance the definition is pretty easy. Uh, it's the effective resistance between the two input base terminals when the differential mode is applied. So that means VD is different from zero. So this is a circuit of a differential amplifier with a pure uh, differential input signal. Um, so this type of circuit, if you look back um, in there's a part. I think we are at uh, chapter 11.2.7 so if you look back into chapter 11.2.5 you can find a concept of something called a half circuit equivalent model that means you can divide this circuit into a half equivalent model so as you can see in here so if now you just chop off one of the branch so one half of that circuit you analyze this loop you can have the relationship uh, of basically uh, you can have V you can have VD over 2 will be equal to uh, the current multiply for uh, the current in this loop multiply for the resistance in this loop uh, the resistance in this loop for this model right here, since you don't have any other source resistance or RE, uh, therefore we just uh, take in R pi and multiply that for IB, which is the current from the base. Okay, so now if we use that, we start with that. Eh, the animation is bad, but excuse me. We start with that equation we found previously. Uh, we move IB to the bottom of the other branch. So now we move number two to the other branch. We have a ratio of the input VD over the input current IB, right? So technically, if you calculate the differential mode input resistance by calculating by dividing uh, your input voltage VD for the input current IB, you have this ratio. So now you can actually define uh, differential mode input resistance as 2R pi. But this is only true when um, this is only true when uh, you try to apply for this 
configuration and in this configuration there is no emitter resistor RE so how can we calculate the differential mode input impedance with added emitter resistor RE okay animation is bad there but anyway um, we start with the so we start with adding RE into the branch into the half circuit equivalent, equivalent model branch now if you apply the same analysis now you have to take in into account this RE so instead of only have R pi multiplied by R I B you have to add another term of I E this current here multiplied by R E you can write I E as 1 plus beta I B you can use the relationship now you write the equation like this then okay just do some magical arrangement there then you can simplify your term uh, to the ratio BD over IB and finally you can define or you can find the equation for your input impedance in differential mode to be uh, 2 times R pi plus 1 plus beta RE so now moving to the common mode input resistance so definition is pretty lame but it's the same um, it's basically yeah resistance in by the two input terminal base when the common mode is applied um, so we start with um, basically the half circuit model also so okay excuse me right there my cat is on my key all right you didn't know what happened but I just kicked my cat out uh, anyway let's continue so in this half circuit model uh, first of all let's assume that uh, you can see that um, you can have RO and you can have RC right uh, in this model you can either consider to add in R mu or R or R not in here um, depend on on how realistically you want to simulate your model however let's ignore those number first uh, let's assume these and these are not there and you analyze in this loop so similar to to previous one when you have RE here technically you just have to do the same uh, analysis you can have um, two time RICM which is your this is RICM is defined as the common mode input resistance so you have two time your common mode input resistance will be equal to R pi plus one plus beta uh, multiplied by R not so similar way that how you derive the previous one with the RE so since uh, RO is usually very large um, RO is usually very large plus you have uh, you have to multiply that for 1 plus beta so multiply by for over 100 times uh, then this term is way too large in comparison to this terms so usually you can estimate uh, it to be 1 plus beta multiplied by 2 R R O. Uh, so this is an estimation you can get rid of R pi so what if we take into account uh, the collector base resistant R mu and also the transistor output resistant R not okay and small small R so let's say it's gonna be small R and this is gonna be big R okay so let's confuse um, so we start with the same the same group right but if you can see that basically now okay uh, you was looking for this resistance, right? You have some kind of like a resistance of this whole group here. Uh, what you're gonna do is basically you parallel R mu, okay? So what you found before parallel that for R mu, also parallel that for one plus beta R small R not, okay? And now you can easily calculate. Uh, your RICM. So, in practice, if the problem uh, allow you to neglect either of these number, like either neglect RO or R not, you can basically just remove it 
from the equation. Uh, so that's this piece of cake. So should we do one example? Uh, I don't have much time, but let's go over one example, but let's make it quick. So the goal here is let's find the differential mode and common mode input resistance for this circuit in here. Um, so we consider uh, this is a uh, this is a circuit in Figure 11.17 in your textbook. Um, so transistor parameter are beta equal 100, V beyond 0.7. Look at what I have in here. I actually have a finite early voltage. So that will lead to something, okay? And what it is, uh, basically, is the output is the output resistance of your transistor. Um, so I'm also going to give you uh, the value of IRF, which is going to be 0 0.5 milliampere. Uh, and also, it's going to be pretty much equal to uh, IQ because these two branch are identical. So if the current between I1 and I2, these two branch in here are slit evenly, I can have I1 equal I2 probably they are almost equal to half of IQ over 2 which is 0 0.25 milliampere so if I find the small uh, now I just gonna ask you to find a small signal parameter uh, R pi for Q1 and Q2 this one and this one so I just have to apply the equation R pi is gonna be equal to beta VT v, beta is 100 VT is a constant equal to 0 0.0 Zero to six at room temperature. ICQ is going to be equal to either I1 or I2 since they are both equal to, to each other, equal to 0 0.25. You can plug in the number and have the value of R pi equal to 10.4 kilo, kilo ohms. Um, now, since you have the uh, early voltage is finite, you need to calculate your uh, small r not which is the output trans resistance of your transistor that's going to be equal to the early voltage over for icq so plug in the number either for i1 or i2 you have 100 over 0 0.25 equal to 100 kilo ohms now find the output resistance for q4 and that is going to be r not equal to the early voltage over by iq and it's going to be 100 over 0 0.5 equal 200 kilo ohms. So the hard work is done. Now it's the easy one. Just plug in the equation that you found before in previous slides. The different mode input resistance is going to be RID uh, equal to 2 R pi equal to 20.8 kilo ohms. And this is because we don't have any RE in here. If we add RE, this equation is going to be different. Uh, you have to add in the terms, uh, what's that? 1 plus beta multiplied by RE. And for the common mode input resistance, since we are neglecting the effect of R mu, we don't have any information about that. Um, so we're going to calculate the common mode input resistance. RICM is going to be equal to uh, 1 plus beta 1 plus okay I don't know what happened there probably there was some my cat clicking on the keyboard anyway so we are at the final here just the common mode um, basically you just apply the equation uh, neglecting R mu but you still have to keep the uh, one half terms okay uh, factoring out one plus beta and plucking off the number you can have finally have the common mode input resistance to be 10.1 mega ohms so if a differential mode input voltage with a peak up value of uh, around 15 millivolt is applied. Uh, the source must be capable of supplying a current uh, um, around 10 
mm, sorry, uh, supplying a current of around uh, 0 0.72 microampere without having uh, any severe loading effect. So, however, if the input current from uh, a 15 millivolt common mode signal um, it would it would only um, it would only approximate to around 15 nano ampere. So this is the end of the lecture today. Um, I hope you guys uh, learn some things, uh, and I will see you guys next time. Uh, bye.